What's going on guys, welcome to the video. We are getting really close to 100,000 subscribers now, so if you haven't subscribed already, I would really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and let's get over 100,000 before we hit Brexit Day. Actually, I think it would be great to hit 100,000 on Brexit Day personally, but before or after then will be great. You guys have done a smashing job supporting the channel, and we're so close to hitting the 100k mark now. But back to this video, it seems Jeremy Corbyn is determined to piss off every single ex-Labour voter that left them at the last election, along with every single Brexiteer in the country, which is a whole 17.4 million people who likely despised him anyway. This is relating to a Telegraph article today that says John Burko nominated for peerage by Jeremy Corbyn. Now everybody will remember John Burko, the Speaker of Remain, who allowed the Ramonas in Parliament to continually block Brexit, culminating in the complete shit show we saw last year before the election. With the Corbinated Chicken and his merry band of losers refusing to go to an election three times before they finally did and got absolutely trounced. But getting slapped down and ultimately rejected by the electorate wasn't enough for Jeremy Corbyn. After his undemocratic Brexit policy, batshit crazy policies that would have bankrupted the country, and of course his support for every organisation that despises us or America. He had to go and spit in our face one more time by trying to get this tosspot into the House of Lords. It says, John Burko has been nominated for an appointment to the House of Lords by Labour. The former speaker appears on a dissolution honours list, compiled by Jeremy Corbyn, the Sunday Times reported. However, the report added that it was unclear whether he would become a Labour peer or a crossbencher. Such a move would be remarkable given that Burko was a Tory MP before being elevated to presiding over the main parliamentary chamber. It would be remarkable considering what he has done as the Speaker of the House against Brexit, which is something the people of this country voted for. Like most of the MPs in the previous Parliament, this arsehole played a key role in stopping Brexit, and has therefore cost the public a hell of a lot of money in continued payments to the EU. So there is no way in hell this guy should be given a peerage and paid yet more public money. Personally, I don't think anyone should be going to the House of Lords, especially not unelected fuckpigs and the likes of John Burko. Mr Burko was criticised by a number of prominent Brexiteers over the past few years as he was accused of helping support a Remain agenda in the Commons. There's no accusation of that, it's a known fact. Let's be honest, he is called the Speaker of Remain for a reason. It was reported that Downing Street was so angered by Mr Burko's stance that it took the highly unusual decision not to offer a retiring Commons Speaker a place in the House of Lords, something that the government was right to do, and I'm sure you will all agree. It comes as a billionaire financier was also reported to be in line for an appointment to the House of Lords by Boris Johnson. And while Burko is more unfitting than most for a place in the House of Lords, I don't think the billionaire should be in there either. I don't think any of them should be in there, if you ask me, as I just said. So we'll skip over the rest of talking about that because I don't care, neither of them should be in there, fuck the House of Lords. The newspaper also stated that Mr Corbyn had also put forward former Labour Deputy Leader Tom Watson, with whom he had an often tense working relationship for a peerage, once again, shouldn't be there. Mr Corbyn's former key aide and Chief of Staff Carrie Murphy has also been nominated for a place in the Upper House according to the report. A nomination for Mrs Murphy could also prove controversial given the inquiry into alleged instances of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party by the Equality and Human Rights Commission. Siobhan McDonough, a Labour MP, endorsed a tweet by the group Hope Not Hate which stated, no one who is a subject in the EHRC investigation should be ennobled before the full EHRC report is released. Referring to the tweet, Mrs Donner said, a very reasonable view, don't you think? Yeah, I'd say it's a very reasonable view, but once again, no one should be there at all. And here we have John Burko as Speaker's most notable controversy, so we'll have a look at that. I expect there's plenty that have been omitted, and I likely can't remember all of them anyway, so I probably won't be able to elaborate on too many more. Following his election as Speaker in 2009, Mr Burko angered Tory MPs by revealing he was a supporter of the hunting ban to one of his constituents. 
Mrs. Burko's wife was thrown into the spotlight when she posed for London's Evening Standard wearing nothing but a bedsheet. Sally Burko described the aphrodisiac effect of their life at the Palace of Westminster and described the view from the Speaker's house as incredibly sexy. Mrs. Burko also got the Speaker into trouble after he was spotted driving her sports car, which sports a bollocks to Brexit sticker. Well, I wonder if that view from the Speaker's house is what made her feel incredibly sexy enough to sleep with John Burko's cousin. Maybe that's what it was, because it seems she likes to get John Burko in trouble. And as for her bollocks to Brexit sticker, maybe she should spend less time sucking on other people's balls. Perhaps that would be a start, the stupid bin. Mr. Burko has been criticised on numerous occasions for perceived interference in Brexit, after admitting in February 2017 that he had voted Remain. Most recently, he was accused of not only bending the rules, but breaking them, by using a Commons procedure known as an SO24 emergency debate to allow a successful move by pro-Remain MPs forcing the Prime Minister to seek an extension to Article 50, which we all remember very well what the traitorous fuck pigs did in Parliament last year that prompted the epic speech from Attorney General Geoffrey Cox that we will listen to again because it will never get old. This Parliament is a dead Parliament. It should no longer sit. It has no moral right to sit on these green benches. They don't like the truth. Twice they have been asked to let the electorate decide upon whether they should continue to sit in their seats while they block 17.4 million people's votes. This parliament is a disgrace. But they're too cowardly to give it away. But the time is coming. The time is coming, Mr Speaker when even these turkeys won't be able to prevent Christmas. I have to say, guys, I still love that speech. It was a great speech. Luckily, we got rid of that dead parliament, as he said. Mr. Burko's use of expenses has raised eyebrows, particularly as he took office at the height of the scandal over Westminster perks. He racked up one £172 bill being chauffeur-driven to a conference just 0.7 miles from Parliament. He also spent £367 taking a car to Luton to deliver a speech on how MPs were restoring their reputation after the expenses scandal. <laughs> A taxpayer-funded £37,000 portrait of the Speaker led to accusations of vanity. The official painting by British artist Brendan Kelly joined those of his predecessors going back to Sir Thomas More and featured a new coat of arms developed for Mr Burko. The Speaker was criticised for voicing his opposition to the suggestion that the US President Donald Trump might address Parliament during a 2017 state visit. Introducing Chinese Premier Xi Jinping ahead of his address to Parliament in 2015, Mr Burko said the Asian superpower should be a moral inspiration and the world will be watching an apparent reference to Beijing's poor human rights record. And I expect there is a hundred more things, but I don't want to drag this video out too long by researching every little thing he did and putting it in the video. We all know John Burko is a scumbag, and we all knew Jeremy Corbyn was a scumbag. But it seems Jeremy Corbyn is ready to try and put his friend in the House of Lords, likely to keep boosting the pro-Remain numbers in there, so they can try and shit on Boris Johnson's Brexit plans. It just goes to show Jeremy Corbyn does not give a fuck about the British electorate or what they want. They rejected him and are mostly happy that John Burko won't be getting a position in the House of Lords because of the things he done against Brexit and the British electorate by allowing, as this said, the SO24 debates that delayed Brexit until this year. We should have been out of the EU months ago, as you all know. But on that note, guys, I am going to end the video there. As some of you will know, I have started doing live streams and uploading gaming content on my second channel. So if you want to join one of my live streams to chat with me in real time, have an interest in interesting gaming-related content on YouTube, or just want to subscribe to me over there because you are a legend, the link will be down in the video description and as a pinned comment below. I hope to see you all there. Now before I go, I do want to thank our YouTube, PayPal, Patreon and Subscribestar members for supporting the channel along with everyone who watches my videos. Remember to let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Leave a like, 
subscribe with the notification bell and share this video as it helps the channel a lot and I'll see you all in the next one. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors, slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. Ramon! Ramon! <laughs>